So, uh, thank you, William. Thank you, Deirdre. Uh, yes, welcome. Welcome to Cat Lab 1, Dr. Leon and uh, Dr. Spencer. Uh, my name is Ganesh Manoharan, and with me today, this morning, is Professor Thierry uh, Slusman, who is from St. Luke's Hospital in Brussels. I have Ingrid, who is the nurse on the table, Dr. Morias, who is the anesthetist, and Dr. Yura Madrik, who is in the transit with echocardiography, and we also have Kuhn and Natalie as to help us out. I'd like to present to you uh, closure of a patent from an ovale in a young gentleman. And for today, we'll be using the Cardiostar Intercept device, which is a generation four, which has received CE marking, but is still uh, pending FDA approval. So perhaps I could present the patient to you. First of all, can we go to the slides, please? Yes. So this is a 58-year-old male who, apart from having hyperlipidemia, has no other risk factors and no relevant past medical history. Next slide, please. He presented to us about a month ago with weakness affecting his left side and some facial numbness and blurring his vision. This lasted for about one to two minutes. On admission, he had a MRI of his brain which showed evidence of cerebral infarction. A transinsufficient echocardiogram was performed. This showed a very small PFO and with very little right to left shunting during contrast and valsava. The carotid Doppler was normal and thrombophilia screen again was normal. He then was admitted about a week ago, with a reoccurrence of left-sided weakness. By the way, he was already pre-treated on aspirin and plavix during this time. So he was readmitted again with weakness affecting his left side, again with some facial weakness and blurring vision. This time, the symptoms lasted for approximately two hours. Because of this, he had coronary angiography and right heart study performed, which showed diffuse coronary artery disease, but no real obstructive disease. LV function was normal, and he had normal saturations and normal pressures. So perhaps we can now go to URI to demonstrate or present the echo findings. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Ganesh. Next slide, please. Go ahead, URI. So Thank you, Ganesh. This is an example of a small PFO. The size is three millimeters. The tunnel between the primary and secondary septum is about 15 millimeters. The septum by itself is a bit mobile, but there is no atrial septal aneurysm. After injection of the contrast, via cubital vein, initially no shunting was visible. Just upon the release of Valsalva, there is right to left shunting with the bubbles appearing in the left atrium. So in summary, TE revealed small PFO without septal aneurysm, without resting shunting, but with a moderate right to left shunt induced by Valsalva. Okay, Danish, back thank to you. you. Can we go back to the slide, please? So this is the MRI showing evidence of uh, thromboembolic impacts in multiple areas in the brain. Next slide, please. So in summary, then, we have a young gentleman who is now present twice with a tra definite transient ischemic attack with evidence of uh, TO, with evidence of infarction. Mm -hmm. So today, we'll be using the Intercept Cardiostar device, and the patient has been pre-treated already with aspirin, Plavix, and he's on full body weight heparin. This is a device in summary. It is a dedicated PFO, has available in three different sizes. The unique feature of this device is that it has artificial arms, both in the left atrium, in between the two arms, and on the right atrial disc. And again, articulation point between the forceps and the device itself. The wires are made out of nitinol. The sails are made out of Ivalon. The device is fully retrieval both before and after release. It is a 12 French compatible device. The first three generations have been in use since 1998. The generation four, which is what we're going to be using today, has received CE marking spring 2003, and is pending FDA application. Perhaps now we can go to demonstrate the device itself. Yes, again, the, so, the intent here really is not to discuss the indications for PFO closure, but we felt it was important. Um, in the U.S., we've been somewhat burdened by a, a relatively restricted number of devices to show you that there are many new versions of PFO closure devices that are being developed elsewhere, and this is certainly a provocative one that has moved forward very aggressively in Europe. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so the device comes in two parts the introducer forceps delivery system and the actual device itself, which has a left atrial and right atrial sides. First of all, I will just demonstrate. Just, so, so just to open it, just like a bit, biotomes to forceps, they are not as sharp as usual, usually. And in fact, the way to load the device is first to put the little hole on the right atrial disc into the forceps, to close yep. the forceps, and then, as Ganesh will told, show you. So to ensure that it's fully mounted, the device should be fully mobile and flexible on the introducer sheet. 
And the other feature to demonstrate again is the left atrial side is fully mobile and independent to the introducer, as you can see. We will now mount the device. And to do this, we use a normal 12 French uh, sheet, as you can see. And this goes over a transparent tubing with a funnel to ensure all six arms of the device is in the tube with gently withdrawing the device into the tubing. The next step is to mount the device onto the 12 French sheet. And while we are pulling forward to flush the system to ensure all micro bubbles are removed, especially in the section of the, uh, between the two discs. I would propose you to open the lid. This step is often crucial with PFL closure devices. It's a fairly large caliber sheath system. It's very easy to trap air. But we've seen one case of a rather dramatic air embolus associated with uh, PFO closure. It's an extremely uncommon complication, which is certainly avoidable. Um, Marty, the, 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 the tunnel is sometimes different lengths. Is there a, are there different uh, distances between the two disc here no I think that I think the 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 interdisc spacing is about the same but it articulates in such a way that I think you can um, form this a little bit better than the other devices to the morphology of the tunnel and the specific PFO but to be perfectly honest Spencer this is the first time I've seen one done so, so, so. we have uh, before coming live, I've uh, positioned the Mullen sheet, which is 12 French, across the PFO. To do this, initially, we, I put a 6 French catheter across the PFO using a long exchange wire, removing the, uh, the uh, multiple purpose catheter and then inserting the Mullen sheet. Now, we will, this is the important part on connecting the sheet to the Mullen sheet we are doing under flush. Once that is done, I push the forceps into the Mullen sheet. And now the device is mounted on the Mullen sheet. We'll now remove the sheet. And we will now advance the device into the left atrium. The point to choose the device was that we took twice the size of the mobile part of the interatrial septum. If there is an aneurysm, we go for balloon sizing. OK. Can we go to fluoro for a second, please? Now, as you can see, the device is now coming to the left atrial side. Now we'll go to echo. Can we go to echo, please? Yeah. Good. Now the device is being deployed. Now the next important part is to ensure the articulation side is free for the device to mobilize freely. As you can see in the echo, the left atrial disc is mo moving freely. And I'm pulling back both the Mullen sheet and the uh, forceps together. The left atrial side aligns itself nicely on the septum. Now having a little bit of tension on the left atrial side, and as you can see, there's nice tension there. Now, can we maybe go to fluoro, please? OK, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to release the right atrial side now. Okay, that's perfect. So that's now released. I'm going to release the tension on the device. Can we go to echo, please? And you right now will tell us if uh, it's uh, here properly to the surrounding uh, structures. Yeah, position of the device is, looks correct. Let me see the position to the aorta. Can you put some color? Just to make sure. Yeah, just a moment. Okay, just here. Okay, there's no color. Good. I think the device is well, okay. deployed cleanly. So now we're going to release the um, forceps. I'm going to film this. Opening this. Go to, um, good. So the device is now released. Could you check? And um, OK, I think that's yeah. nice deployment. Yeah. The device is sitting uh, well around the aorta. And okay. also positioned to the mitral and tricuspid valve. Looks quite well. So oh, thank you. Perhaps we can go to the final slide, please. I think we're running out of time. So. So essentially, this is a patient who now presents twice with a transient ischemic attack with definite evidence of cerebral embolism. Uh, and in view of the presentation, we have proceeded to close the device with the Cardiostar Generation 4. Essentially, I think 
patients who present with such a history should be fully investigated for secondary causes. And in the event of crypt cryptogenic cause, then we should attempt to close it. Secondly, a small PFO without aneurysm is not synonymous to an innocent PFO. And I think the device is, has some unique properties that will aid deployment of the device. So with that, I will thank you. Thank you very much. This was really a very elegant transmission. We really appreciate it. It's a demonstration of a new device that certainly could have value, and it was performed with tremendous expertise and, and great clarity. Thank you very much from Alst. We really appreciate the transmission. Thank you very much.